Oh my gosh, can you guys believe it? We passed 500 subscribers. I'm, I'm like in shock. I'm so happy that we passed 500. My goal for this year is to hit 1,000 subscribers, so it's so great to have hit the halfway mark, and we're not even halfway through the year. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for sending me all the nice texts. In celebration of hitting 500 subscribers, I want to do something that I've been wanting to do since the very start of the channel. I want to save it for a special occasion, and here we go. So for those of you who don't know, I studied film and acting at NYU Tisch prior to coming to medical school. And so that's how I'm able to do these videos and to put all these awesome edits in because I have prior experience doing it. Now, being in medicine, I'm trying to incorporate the two, hence my YouTube channel, but also gives me a unique insight when watching these medical TV shows. You guessed it, by looking at the title of this video, today we're gonna review The Good Doctor. The main premise of the show is really interesting to me. The main character has autism, and the reason it's so interesting to me is because I worked with children with autism in my high school and college. Not only are we gonna look at this episode from a film student and a medical student background, but as someone who's worked with children with autism, we're gonna see if they accurately portray what autism is. Enough talking, let's get straight into it. So the first episode is called the pilot episode, Burnt Food. And for those of you who don't know, pilot episode just means that this is the episode that they filmed and showed to the company before getting the whole series greenlit. As a kid, I was like, why is everyone naming their first episode pilot? Okay, so we can already see shots of like him doing some OCD type behavior and see like the Rubik's cubes over here, them being perfectly stacked. Everything is organized properly. That is more of like an OCD kind of thing. It's kind of symbolic because he's doing the scrub in for surgery. He's doing it already at his own house. So it's kind of like showing you the duality of his condition as well as his future as a, as a clinician. Ooh, that's good. The white line on the floor is the artistic symbol of him walking the same path to work or wherever he's going every single day. That's not how you kick a soccer ball, but okay, we'll let it get slide. Yeah, so that's very accurate. People with autism have a very high sensitivity to the senses and they can easily become hyper stimulated and they like shut down or begin to, especially as a kid, begin to cry because it's just too much for them. It's almost like, and this is not to like belittle, but it's kind of like Superman when he first came to Earth and he could hear everything and see everything. It's kind of like that where they, they can hear not more than the average person, but they're more sensitive to the general things that we can just tune out or adapt to. When they're having a hyper-stimulation episode, they have their own little ways to, to, cal to calm themselves down. I know I worked with a kid who his way of stimming himself was to take anything in his hands, whether it was a long stick or a ball, and just would spin it. And as he spinned it, he would calm down. This little toy seems to be his way of calming himself down. Oh, snap. Okay, just, that's really sad, but just a note, if you're ever in an emergency and something like this happened, don't shout someone call 911 because of the bystander effect. People just assume someone else is going to do it. The best thing to do is to point at someone and say, you in the green shirt, call 911. You, it, the, the cap, go call security or whatever. It's good to assign people roles and that's how you'll be sure that someone's going to get the job done. That's great. Oh my gosh, people with cell phones. I cannot stand this. It's so true, but it's so bad. Yeah, so when someone's bleeding, one of the best things that you could do is apply pressure to wherever they're bleeding just so you could reduce the blood loss that they're experiencing. Hello, I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. I'm a surgical resident at San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. Okay, good start. I like this from an artistic point of view. Autism, a mental condition characterized by difficulty in communicating and using language and abstract concepts. That's the definition. Does it sound like I'm describing a surgeon? Kind of. Just kidding, it's a joke. Hey, objections. Marcus, stop making everything so personal. I made it personal. You've wanted his job since day one. Everyone in this room knows that. She's a good actress. Yes. And the reason I say that is because she's doing something called artistic hiding, where you're acting and saying the lines you're supposed to say, but you're playing with things in the room, which normal people do. Notice, next time you go and have dinner with someone and they're talking, usually they like play with their fork or they move their cup from position to position. And it's meaningless movements, but it's what normal people do. And so actors start to do it to creatively hide. And so she filled up the water jug and that's how she was creatively hiding as she spoke her lines. Yes, he has autism, but he also has savant syndrome. They're also saying here that he has savant syndrome. He has extreme memory recall abilities. So he, he needs two things. He needs to be able to deliver the medical care, which makes him a doctor. But a good doctor is someone who can relate to someone on a humanistic level and have communication skills and have empathy. So he might be deficient in this because of his autistic background, but 
he definitely makes up for it with his ability to learn a lot. So we'll see how this plays out. That's very interesting. That's really good dual storytelling where in the room they're talking about him and his ability to know things above the average doctor and we're seeing it done in the other scene. If you're trying to turn this into a nepotism case, we're gonna have to fire her idiot nephew from bookkeeping. She swallowed those lines. I don't even know what she said. No, I don't want nepotism, I just want fire marketing. One thing that I learned in my acting class, slower is clearer and clearer is faster. Melendez wants to operate on 104, but Claire hasn't gotten informed consent. Informed consent is really important. It's what you have to get from the patient before doing a surgery where you make sure that the right patient, you make sure that you're doing the right surgery on them, and you make sure that the patient knows what surgery is being done on them too. It needs to be collected before every single surgery just to reduce the amount of errors. To the point where a lot of patients are like, you're the ninth person to ask me for my date of birth. And like we always have to say, it could get annoying, but we just want to make sure that it's correct at every stage of the game so that there's no possibility for error. Jared. We don't have a relationship. Again, creative hiding with the sex. hair band-aids. So. Those beds look really comfy. The on-call room beds are very uncomfortable. They're just like a sheet of plastic. Like, make a C with your hand. That's how thick the mattress is. There are no sheets. There are sometimes no pillows. Basically a place to collapse. It's not a place to sleep. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how they were able to do the do on those nasty dudes. So this is like some Sherlock stuff. The left lung is in distress. Pneumothorax is when air enters into the thoracic cavity and it can collapse one of the lungs. Would you please sign the consent? No. You're scared. Uh, I'm not scared. Well, you should be. We're gonna cut your chest. A little aggressive. I don't think most people are like that, where they just tell the person you're lying, you're scared. It's more of like, are you scared? How can I help you? Or do you have any questions about the surgery? People with autism ha struggle with communication, but also with eye contact. Um, so if you notice here, he's not even looking at the police officer, he's looking at a downward angle off to the side. Dang! Yo, they took him down! He's trying to save my son's life. Also, like, did no one call security? Like, <laughs> do they not know that there's a child who's dying in the airport? That's inconsistent in terms of storytelling. This is also just a note because I've, I've always wanted to say this. Um, when you're doing CPR, I know everyone's like, okay, it's 30 compressions and two breaths. If you are not comfortable doing the two breaths, you're fine with just doing compressions. Oh, so he's sanitizing the area with alcohol. Oh, and he's sanitizing his gloves with alcohol too. He should have um, sterilized the knife also with alcohol. So that's a little, it's a li just a little like being nitpicky. What did you do? Oh, I can't watch kids get hit. But yeah, you could see here that he's like rocking in his chair and playing with the bunny. So again, repetitive motions. Some parents struggle with having children with mental health conditions and even they themselves don't know how to help out. And sometimes it can be channeled as anger, which is not an excuse at all. It's the same, 86 BPM. No, it used to be higher. No, it used to be 86, it's still 86. It used to come up to here. Some people definitely have this elitist attitude like I went to medical school for X amount of years and you just like went and googled it so I definitely know more than you and there's no reason that you should even be questioning my judgment and I think that kind of mentality is what allows medical errors to happen because you don't allow yourself an opportunity for exploring possible mistakes that you made I didn't know with the suction. I can't see a damn thing. Suction. suction! That's the medical student job it's basically like you stand there and if there's blood or pus or anything that's coming out of the body cavity that's hindering the surgeon from from seeing what's going on, you're just like, mm -hmm, you. So that's our job all the time. That is cool. Am I missing something? No, sir. Knife? He should have washed his hands because he touched that bottle. Consistency is key. Has he gone to heaven? <sighs> Oh. Yeah, sure, sure, sure he has. Oh, he was the doctor that they went to. Woo! How long ago was it that we wouldn't hire black doctors in this hospital? How, how long ago was it that we wouldn't hire female doctors at this hospital? You need to continue to expand diversity and inclusion in order to progress society's problems. I remember one time we had someone who was interviewing for medical school and they had a stutter problem. When I was approached on the issue, I, I told them, I was like, absolutely. If they qualify in terms of their academics, then there's no reason that they shouldn't be accepted because they can still communicate, it's just in a different way. And sure, yeah, the patients might be taken aback by it, but there are some patients who can really relate to it and they can inspire some kids who also have stuttering problems. And it's not like medicine should be this elitist club for people who are 
the optimal health. Some doctors have cancer, some doctors are wheelchair bound, there are some doctors who have mental health conditions that are just under the radar, and no one should be barred from medical school or medical training um, because of their limitations, because we all have them in some capacity, it's just who's wearing it on their sleeve. Something to think about. Reduce cardiac output. Stress out their organs. So he has pericardial effusion, which is fluid in the pericardial space, and it can constrict the heart from, from beating properly. It's not normal. There's a concave deformity in the right atrium. Instead of the right atrium looking like this, it's a little shoved in, so it's a concave deformity. And so they're saying that a shard came down from up here and through the jugular vein, the um, brachiocephalic vein, and then the superior vena cava, and now it's in the right atrium. The YouTube clip already has over 200,000 views. <laughs> YouTube Club has over 200,000 views. <laughs> Same. Yeah, okay, so I've seen this a lot, this, like, surgical observation deck. I don't know where it is. The hospitals that I've been to don't have this, like, theater and watch what's going on in the surgery. Maybe this is, like, olden days, but I've never seen this. And if I did, I would really like to just sit there. So I bet you the episode's gonna end with him getting accepted to this hospital. It has to. Dr. Brown? Yeah! You were right. Dr. Sean Murphy was right, not Dr. Brown. Letting things get personal is a short formula for screwing things up. I don't know. Letting things get personal is how we... how we make it matter. Letting things get personal is how we make it matter. You're new to town, right? Yes. Well, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. No. <laughs> I do have one question. Yeah. Why were you rude to me when we first met, then nicer to me the second time we met, and now you want to be my friend? Which time was it that you were pretending? Dang, which time was it that you were pretending? I want to be this guy's friend. <laughs> Sean, we're ready. I think everyone's realizing that everyone else also has some kind of problem with their communication. Like, people who have authority complexes or disrespect one another or even like she did just use the per people around them to get what they need to get that's more of like an, a hidden theme that they're trying to portray i don't know if you guys caught that the vote was clear why are we reopening this bruh what's with your white coat first of all it's too tight two no one ever buttons it three it's too white like where are your battle scars man doctor i would love to hire someone who never ever makes a mistake unfortunately god already has a job true Dang. Speaking in front of the medical board of people who are about to determine your residency, that's insanely scary. What the heck? Yo, these high school kids have become wild animals. Dr. Murphy. Hey, you know what? Oh my gosh. Stop, don't show them. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I want to make that possible for other people. And I want to make a lot of money so that I can have a television. <laughs> oh, he's so simple. But not in like a bad way. I want to be the first to welcome you to San Jose. San Yay! Ah. <laughs> oh. oh, that's so beautiful. Oh. So his brother died and his bunny died, and so he wants to use that. Yo, know, can someone say personal statement up in here? <laughs> ah, the beginning scene of him with the washed hands. Yo, please end with the door opening and him walking in. And, oh no, okay, I guess not. That would have been a cool artistic decision. Like, as he's entering the field, the door ends and the season ends, so you get the sense that, okay, the next episode is going to be about him in the field, but they're still gone, so we're going to see how this ends. Here, apparently, they put the mask on for him, too, which I had to do for someone once when we went to a surgery. It was an emergency delivery, and the doctor ran in the room and didn't have the mask on, or something happened to their mask and they needed it adjusted, so they're like, Peter, can you help me out? And I'm like, my hands are over this person, I'm just trying to, like, see. It's impossible. Well, not impossible, but it's very difficult to, like, put the mask on without, like, getting it into someone's eyelash. Suction? Suction! a Suction! That's us. Never forget, you're the smart one. You can do anything. Aww. And I'm proud of you, Sean. See? 
It's the things that happen in your childhood that determine the kind of adult you will become. And that's why we need good pediatricians. You're very arrogant. Do you, think you can't say that. A good surgeon? Does it hurt you as a person? Uh, Is it worth it? Okay, so that's the Good Doctor episode one. A couple of things, that, that ending was a little soft. I wish it ended with him entering into the room. The title of it, Burnt Food, from an artistic point of view, they only mentioned burnt food once, which was when he was saying his speech. It's usually the, the rule in storytelling is if you want your audience to remember something, you have to tell to them three times. It's a very small thing, it's very technical, but it's not as powerful as it could have been. Maybe when he was eating, he like makes a face while eating the sandwich and she's like, yeah, some of the food here is burnt. So like, there's at least a second, for example, the bunny, was mentioned several times, or the brother, so that could have been a more powerful uh, title for the show if they tried to incorporate that in some ways. It was really cool to watch this. Um, I think it's really important to explore these issues in medicine, especially since the world is changing. There actually was a doctor who had an accident and is now wheelchair bound, but their wheelchair is able to correct their posture in a way that they're able to stand during surgeries. So with the advancement of technology, I think that these kinds of discussions will be coming up more and more often. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know down below. And I have not watched Grey's Anatomy or Scrubs or any of those other ones, so if you want me to watch those, just let me know. Again, thank you all so much for the 500 subscribers. Let's try to get a thousand by the end of the year. Let's try to get, I don't know, 10 likes because we got five in the last video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, thank you again so much for the 500 subscribers. You don't know how much it means. And as always, be safe, be strong, be swag. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next one. Next one, next one. Bye. So I can see myself. And I think I'm a little bit too high. No drugs. I think I'm still in frame. Am I in the frame? Am I in the frame? Am I in the frame? What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel! I feel like a dork. But a hot dork. I was like, okay, we're halfway there. Halfway there, halfway there. Isn't that a big time Rush song? <laughs> Yup, you guessed it by watching, by looking at the title of this video. Two videos because I have some prior skill sets that were, that were, not formed. Butterfly in the sky. But also as someone who worked with children with autism, we're gonna look to see if they per 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 purple purple pumples of beaters pickles. Make sure a little higher so that you're not pressing on the cratia. Pressing on the cratia. We hire Sean and we make this hospital better for it. We hire Sean and we are better people for it. Do I have an intro for this video? No. Will I have an outro for this video?